Hi everybody, Levi Clay here and I'm back again. This time we're doing a little bit more of a serious, potentially informative video. Maybe we could consider this a bit of a public service announcement. So I'm definitely, as always, very interested in getting your input on this particular subject. So please do hit me up in that comment section below so we can get some, uh, some dialogue going. Very interested to hear your experiences. So today we're gonna talk about the subject of hearing loss or tinnitus, or which isn't hearing loss in itself, but you know, damage that we can do to our ears as musicians. Now, let me be super clear. I am not here to give you a lecture. <laughs> um, throughout my life, I have been lectured by many people about looking after my hearing, and it was absolutely not something that I paid all that much mind to. I spent a lot of my youth going to very loud gigs and not wearing any sort of hearing protection. And that's something that I regret now being older and wiser and relying on my ears to make a living. <laughs> uh, so for those of you unaware, I personally, and many of you out there I'm sure probably experience the same, I suffer from tinnitus, which is a loud ringing in my ears. It's particularly bad on this side of my head. And yeah, I mean, it's very hard to explain. Interesting observation is recently people have been noticing a kind of high-pitched electrical noise in a lot of my videos. And interestingly, I don't notice it when I'm mixing the audio for my recordings, purely because it's right in that range where I can't hear that. Not in terms of I can't hear the pitch, but because it's almost identical to my tinnitus. So I can't hear that particular pitch because when I listen for that sound, all I can hear is that ringing in my head. So for those of you unexperienced with tinnitus, let me just do this to give you an idea of what's going on 24 hours a day in my head. <laughs> yeah, genuinely, it's um, it's really bad, and it can drive you absolutely insane. It it makes me really struggle with sleeping because it's one of those things when I'm getting on with my day to day work. It's something that I've had for so long now that I'm relatively good at tuning it out. I'm relatively good at it just being something that is there. It's kind of like your heartbeat or your breathing. You don't really notice those things because you're so used to them being there. And my tinnitus is very much like that. Uh, but when, I, when I'm alone with my thoughts or like now when the subject comes up and I stop and I really listen for it, I can hear it. And then when I hear it, it gets louder and louder and it doesn't, it go, it doesn't go away. It amplifies and it's, it's something that I begin to focus on. And it's a genuinely quite a terrifying experience because there's that there's that feeling of I'm never going to get a moment's peace for the rest of my life that's honestly genuinely quite a terrifying experience uh, I know many of you guys out there have probably experienced some sort of tinnitus yourselves so if tinnitus is something that you have dealt with and something that you are continuing to deal with because there is currently no cure for tinnitus let me know in that comment section below anyway the subject today like I say is not just tinnitus but also hearing loss in general now, of course, as musicians, you would expect us to be considerably more likely to experience some sort of hearing loss in our lives, in our careers. I've got some stats here, just looking at surveys that have been carried out by like, health and well-being surveys. Uh, generally speaking, 47% of people have experienced hearing problems in their music career. Uh, that was an older survey. And in the latest survey, 78% of those who suffer think that being a musician was the cause of that. Musicians are four times more likely to experience some sort of hearing damage than the average person. And that makes sense, right? We are exposing ourselves to noise all the time. Um, here's where things become a little bit tricky though, right? Just acknowledging that it's something that we are more likely to experience doesn't mean that it's something that we have to live with because here's the, here's the key thing, right? <clears throat> I need my ears to do my job. My ears are my most valuable asset. I could, well, losing my hands wouldn't be ideal, right? But I could, I could maybe get by in a, as a professional transcriber without my hands. I could get by without my legs, but my ears are how I make a living. I cannot put a price on how valuable my ears are to me and how valuable my hearing is. And now I'm 32 now, I'm getting to that age where uh, you know, you've considered mortality and things like that. And I'm starting to consider, well, how would I get on in life if my hearing was to just sort of disappear? These stats go on. Despite all of these facts, 68% of musicians haven't had a hearing test in the last three years, and 81% believe that they should use hearing protection. 
but only 67% ever used any. <laughs> when I used to play with my band, Hellcat Molly, we played loud and I considered myself the musical director for the band. It was my band, my project. So I wouldn't wear hearing protection. And that's ridiculous. I could justify it at the time because my logic was, well, I need to hear exactly what's going on. I need to direct people in this band and get the sound that I'm going for. And that was foolish. That was absolutely foolish, and I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> uh, now, I'm sure if you go and look into this as a subject, you will find many, many musicians that have experienced some sort of hearing loss, some of your heroes. I remember meeting and interviewing Paul Gilbert many years ago, and that was, you know, great getting to hang out with, uh, you know, one of my heroes. I'd, I'd met Paul several times before that. I had a guitar lesson with Paul years before that, kind of like a group lesson. We were sat in a circle, and I was sat... Uh, on his left side, maybe? I, I forget. Either way, I was sat on the side of him where his hearing was almost completely gone. Maybe he's right. I don't know what side it was. Uh, but the point is, he was really struggling to hear anything that I was saying to him. And when I interviewed him years ago at the Marshall gig for uh, Guitar Interactive magazine, it was very much the same. His hearing was absolutely a huge issue for him. And of course, that's why he he gigs with those these ear protectors, the, you know, the earmuffs on. That's his, part of his stage look now, but it's also so he can actually hear what the hell is going on. Um, that's a terrifying thought, right? Having to try and do your job where hearing is important and not being able to hear. So today... Um, I have been suffering with a further issue with my hearing. And I wanted to talk about that, uh, the signs that I was having for that, and today I had to do something about it type thing. So every single day for the last maybe two weeks, I have been waking up, getting out of my bed, and having less hearing ability. Um, to the point where my wife would be, because she you know, leaves for work, she'll wake me up and she'll tell me some things that need doing in the house or whatever. And it had genuinely got to the point where I was having to like say, I can't hear what you're saying. S speak slower or louder, right? And I'm genuinely trying to lip read what she's saying because I cannot hear. I can't hear. It's like I've lost about 80% of hearing in this ear and about 50% hearing in this ear. And after maybe 20 minutes, this ear would pop. Boom. And hearing came back. This ear was taking a hell of a lot longer to do. Now, initially, I thought this might be trapped water. I was getting water trapped in my ears from showers, etc. Because I would notice a loss of hearing after a shower when I had water in my ears. It's like I couldn't clear that water out type thing. Uh, but yeah, it was getting to the stage where I would spend 70% of my day barely being able to hear anything out of this ear. And it was getting... Terrifying, <laughs> terrifying, not just because of the lack of hearing and not knowing what the hell was going on, but everything that we've been talking about, understanding that music is what I do for a living, I have to be able to hear, and if I can't hear out this ear, I can't do my damn job, which is utterly useless, right? Add into that factor that the less my hearing seemed to be effective in this ear, the louder the tinnitus was getting. I could hear that tinnitus and it was starting to drive me absolutely insane. <laughs> so a friend of the channel, Pete Morris, had recommended, last time I was chatting to him about ears and things like that, he was talking about having your ears syringed. So that sounds terrifying to me. No thank you, not interested in anything that uses the word syringe. I do not like needles. I appreciate that sounds ridiculous with all these tattoos, um, but I don't like the, the word syringe. No thank you. <laughs> uh, the more I looked into this, this is essentially a form of irrigation. So using water to cleanse out and clean the, the inner ear canal and, and the eardrum area and just looking after the ears. I'm not going to pretend to be a scientist. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on this, but it was something that I absolutely looked into. And I put it in the back of my mind. It was something that I didn't pay any mind of. Well, last night I was sat up at maybe one o'clock in the morning and I thought to myself, I'm going to look into what my options are because I can't keep going on not being able to hear in this ear. So I put in a little bit of research, and what I found is there's several companies, of course, many, many companies, uh, but the one nearest to me was Lanarkshire's Hearing Centre. So Lanarkshire Hearing Centre. And what Lanarkshire Hearing Centre do is, well, lots of treatments, but the main one that I was interested in getting some um, input on was the subject of earwax removal. So, ugh, not the not the nicest of subjects to talk about, right? But ultimately, we all produce wax in our ears. And there was the concern that maybe I was getting enough of wax build up that it was starting to block my ear canal further down on in my ear. So I looked into uh, Lanarkshire Hearing Center and they offer a service called microsuction, which is uh, not quite the same as irrigation. It's not the insertion of water to clear things out, but it's literally using um, a micro vacuum cleaner, if you like, to really go in there and deal with everything. 
so I went in for an appointment today at the Lanarkshire Hearing Centre, and um, wow, it was certainly an experience. I will tell you that it was an experience. <laughs> I sat down with a lovely lovely lady named Anne and uh, we talked while she was doing the procedure. Uh, no pain whatsoever, didn't hurt in the slightest. It's it's honestly a very strange experience because you've got this little vacuum in your ear and you can, you can definitely hear a sucking sound. Um, insertion of oil from time to time just to help loosen bits. And um, yeah, absolutely no issue with that. What I really enjoyed was getting the, the tweezery type things that she would put in there to... to to pluck and to help uh, remove things and honestly guys I cannot tell you what an incredible difference that made there was a point where she moved uh, just a, what I deemed to be a very small piece uh, from my left ear and like that it was like somebody had lifted a duvet off of my head and at that point I realized how unbelievably um, ignorant it is to not look after your ears so Honestly, as a service, Lanarkshire Hearing Centre provided me with a lot of happiness <laughs> um, for as little as £40, okay? Let me be clear, this is not a paid advert in any way, shape or form. What I'm getting at, it was it was a cheap thing to offer in return for what I'm getting out of it. So unbelievably happy. And to be honest, it's something that I recommend as an experience, just purely because of how it feels. To be completely honest, it got to the stage where I was, she's like, right down in my ear very in control of what she's doing and I'm like this is this is almost enjoyable it's like you're scratching an itch on my back that I can't quite reach but inside my head um, I almost didn't want it to end <laughs> um, so that was that was uh, definitely an experience and yeah like I say honestly my hearing feels a hundred times better than it was this time yesterday so I'm going back for a follow-up appointment with them just to, for an additional cleanup and yeah I will probably be making semi-regular appointments to this place because um, of the difference that it has made to my listening experience. Now, the other thing to factor in with this is the other services that are available to you. So I guess what I'm getting at is go out there, do some sort of hearing test, even if it's just an online hearing test, because checking for things like hearing loss or tinnitus or just knowing that you're getting blockages in your ears, you, you cannot be too over the top with this stuff. My hearing is nowhere near where it should be. I do hearing tests every now and again, and I'm looking at about the 15.5 kilohertz as my top out, which is a little bit lower than you'd want it to be for my age, especially lower than where you'd want it to be for what I do for a living. Uh, but I want to keep that up there. I don't want my hearing to drop off. And it's something that I need to start paying more attention to and respecting a little bit more. So uh, I think you guys should maybe do the same. <laughs> I'm going to book myself in with the Lanarkshire Hearing Centre again, not just for the, the ear cleaning thing, but I'm going to go for a full tinnitus test. Now, as I said earlier, tinnitus is not something that can be cured, but it is something that they can help you um, manage, help you deal with. Like I say, a lot of it for me is psychological. If I focus on it, if, it, if I draw my attention to it, um, it has a huge impact and it can really ruin a lot of time for me. Whereas if I could put myself in a position where I've, I'm more effective at tuning it out, that I, I cannot explain how much money I would pay for that experience. There is um, there's an exercise that I know you can do where you put your fingers on the back of the head like this and you do like a slapping thing on the on the back of your neck. It's hard to exp explain. Um, you do that on the back of your neck like 15 times or something. And I don't know how it works, um, but when you do that, and you, you take your hands away, your tinnitus is completely gone, completely gone for all of about 30 seconds. And then the ringing starts to come back. And the first time I tried that, I wanted to cry. I genuinely wanted to cry because I have not known what it feels like to experience true silence for decades now. And that's not good. So hopefully one day we come up with some sort of cure for tinnitus. Um, anyway, yeah, so extremely serious subject. Guys, look after your damn ears. Look after your ears. You do not want to be like these people that lose their hearing. It's not a, it, something that would get in the way of doing the thing that you love. It's not something that you ever want to put yourself in. So um, fingers crossed I'm going to be a little bit better with this. Go back to that old adage of don't put anything in your ear smaller than an elbow, I think is what they say. <laughs> stop putting your damn finger in your ear. I do it all the time still, but, you know, <laughs> I've got to stop. Anyway, um, 
Um, as always, this video was brought to you by the wonderful support of my patrons. So thank you very much for your kindness, generosity, and support, guys. Um, you allow me to keep doing the things that I do for a living, and I genuinely really appreciate that. Uh, also, you can check out one of my books on Amazon. Just search for Levi Clay. You will find lots of my work there. There's tons of books there. Probably most notably my latest book, 100 Slide Licks for Blues Guitar, um, which, yeah, is doing quite well. Uh, as always, if you would like to subscribe to my Patreon, you can check it out up here. You can subscribe to my YouTube by clicking this button down here, and you will see two more of my videos here and here. Thank you so much for all the kindness and support, guys. I'm repeating myself now, but genuinely, it's amazing to uh, have such an awesome community around the videos that I'm making. So thank you for that. And uh, yeah, get involved in that comment section below, and I will see you guys for another video soon. Goodbye.